and after about an hour of insulation the electronic ignition is now wired in and it seems to be idling a lot smoother. Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. This year has been a pretty good year for me car wise as I've finally got the Capri engine running again after about 18 months off the road. It's involved fiddling around with timing, fueling and all sorts of other stuff and generally I'm pretty happy with how it's performing. However, as you can probably see in here, it does idle quite rough and perform pretty badly throughout the rev range. I think there's probably some more tweaks to the timing and fuel mixture to be done, but I'm going to try out a product that hopefully will improve cold starting, low RPM running and generally performance throughout the rev range. So today we're going to be looking at the Street Fire Multi-Spark Ignition Module made by a company called MSD, it comes from the United States. Um, and the idea is it's not a complete electronic ignition because it doesn't have the crank sensors and the O2 sensors and, and all that business. But the idea is that it just kind of smooths out the running of existing uh, points or electronic ignition system um, by adding kind of additional sparks into the cycle and boosting uh, the spark where necessary. So I'm going to trial install it into the Ford Capri see if it makes much difference to the running that's idle. Now the first step of the installation was this is actually meant for American V8 engines. So you have these wires that protrude out the side here and if you um, cut the two that I've cut there it will run on a four cylinder engine. So now I just have to figure out how to connect all these wires into the Capri, see if it makes a difference. So now she's all wired up rather messily at the moment as you can see but let's go and see how she works and if she starts well as you can see she starts beautifully first time and holds quite a steady idle at about 8 to 10,000 rpm still wanders a little bit but does seem to be an improvement on the standard ignition setup. And this is the engine's cooled down a fair bit now, so that is actually quite impressive. I haven't had to use the choke um, or fiddle with the throttle at all, it's just started straight away. So I'm not going to do a full road test today, so I won't know the proper performance of this unit for the rest of this video. But initial impressions, very impressed. Previously the engine would uh, almost stumble and die if left without feathering for a while but it seems to be running very steadily now. So now I'm going to kill the engine and go over an overview of the wiring. Okay, wiring up the unit then. First thing I've done as previously discussed is to cut these two wires which tells the unit that it's running on a four cylinder engine. Also, I've set the rev limit to 6,800 RPM. You might be able to get it get away with higher depending on your application. But this is what I've set it to, to get good performance but also protect the engine. There's quite a few wires on this that may or may not be used. In my case, because I'm running an electronic ignition, I don't need the purple and green wires, which are meant for a separate magnetic pickup. So they are just going to stay unattached. Next, the unit has to get power from the engine, and it does that simply through the thickest red wire to the battery positive terminal, and the thickest black wire to the battery negative terminal. In my case, I've extended the battery negative wire so I can reposition the unit far away from the engine. Now onto the messy part. In this application, the only wires that should be attached to the coil is the standard king lead, an orange wire that comes from the unit, and a black wire that comes from the unit. All of the other cabling from the engine is attached to separate cables for the unit. Your exact cabling arrangement will depend on the configuration of your engine and the ignition, but if you want to know how mine's set up, check out my other video where I've done an overview of my engine's ignition, and then you can tailor yours to suit. 
First of all, I'll start with the two wires that were originally attached to the negative terminal on my ignition coil. These were one black wire, which came from my distributor. That now attaches directly to the white wire for the MSD ignition. Secondly, there was a green cable, which was towards the rev counter. That now attaches to a grey wire, which goes to the MSD ignition system. Things get slightly more complicated when you look at what used to be attached to the positive terminal. In my case, it was three cables. There was a red wire, which goes to the distributor, black and yellow wire, which is the 12 volt starting feed from the starter motor, and the black wire, which was the normal 12 volt running signal, which goes via a ballast resistor. Now, all of these wires come together in a sort of a bundle. I have the black and the yellow wires attached together, the two power sources connected. Connected to this is the red cable from the distributor, and these both connect all together to the new dark red cable which attaches into the unit. It's important to note that this system does not require a ballast resistor, so I've removed that from my circuit. And that, folks, is pretty much that. I hope you found this useful. I may do an update later with more performance and reliability characteristics. But until then, see you next time.